concern I've never had during these events, so I hope we're going to be um, inspired all tonight. Um, um, Ian Beatty has taken over officially as the race coordinator this year. Um, it's been a sort of ad hoc thing for the last couple of years. We now have an official race coordinator, Ian Beatty. You can meet him seeing the evening. I'd just like to ask Ian up now to um, help set things rolling. Thank you, Ian. Thanks very much, Eugene. Welcome to everybody. Hope you enjoy the night here at the St George's West, which is the new venue. And one of the reasons we've moved to the new venue is related to the fact Run and Become, as I'm sure most of you know, have moved just round the corner here. Queen's Ferry Street. Run and Become have sponsored this evening since the start, so a big thanks to Adrian and Run and Become for that. I think we've, we've got a fantastic range of presentations and, and chat tonight, and I uh, just want to quickly run through who's here. First of all, we're going to hear from Ken and Sue Walker, uh, and I'll introduce them separately, but they're going to talk about crewing, backup and support, which they've got a lot of experience of. After that, we've got our own race doctor, Dr Chris Ellis. Chris has been involved in the race for quite a number of years now and has turned into his, his built reputation as being one of the top experts in endurance running. Not, not just in the UK, but, but Europe and worldwide, so it'll be great to hear again from Chris. After that, we're going to have a coffee break where it's a chance to mingle with other people, there's, there's been a lot of experience around the room, so take the chance to talk to people, ask some questions, and that will just take place in the area when you come in. And then after the interval, we've got another couple of speakers. We've got Dr. Andrew Murray, who quite a few of you will know as having run from John Gross to the Sahara. Andrew's now a, a physical activity champion with the Scottish Government. And then with the agent, who's going to talk on uh, give us his thoughts on the motivation of things with agents. Agents make things. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Ken Sue Walker. Right. Um, as Ian said, there's a huge range of experience in this room here tonight. And if I could ask for a show of hands, first of all, from people here who've run any form of an ultra, Yeah, a lot of talk. <laughs> Can I have another show of hands then for anybody who's ever supported in any ultra? Right. So nearly as much experience as support as we have in ultra running. So when you have your coffee break, ask questions. There's bound to be somebody who knows the answer. Right. Ken and I are going to be talking between us about supporting ultras. We've done a fair few West Highland Ways and some other ultras besides. But specifically, we're going to be talking about West Highland Way and the journey type of ultra. First things first is support. No matter what your runner tells you, you are the most important part of the team. <laughs> <laughs> because... If you keel over, or have a car crash, or aren't there to support your runner, the chances are they won't finish the race. So before you fuss about looking after your runner, look after yourself. The West Highland Way race record is under 16 hours, but you've got 35 hours to do it. And a fair number of people will take up to the 35 hours. Now that means if you're trying to do it in one shift, you as support are going to miss two nights sleep. You're going to be driving a car, you might be supporting your runner running with them in the dark, you're going to be tired. If you're that tired, you're dangerous. So the first thing I would say is do your darndest to get two shifts. If your runner hasn't managed to get two shifts of support, help them find it for your own sake. It will keep you alive. We haven't had a road accident yet, as far as I'm aware, but if you're really tired doing two shifts and a long West Island way, something might happen. So you're important, try and get double shifts. You need to look after yourself again before your runner, because you need to eat, and you need to sleep, so you need to plan that in as well. And again, with two shifts, you can do it. 
So yes, look after your runner. They expect it, but look after yourself too. So between us, Ken and I are going to talk about preparation. We're going to talk about the race day itself. We're going to talk about fueling and nutrition. And don't forget yourself in that. Talking about after the race and how you need to continue to look after your runner. A bit about the impact of weather, because you're going to get some. And a wee bit of the first aid, what you might need to bring with you. Okay? I'll hand over to Ken. Thank you. Um, I think in common with any other successful expedition, if you want to think of it that way, is making sure you do the preparation and uh, get it right. A few pointers here. Develop a race plan. Um, specify an each permitted meeting point. Include the compulsory checkpoints. Arrange with your runner where you're going to meet up and uh, know where they are. It's a good idea to set out time estimates so that your uh, your support and you know roughly when you're going to hopefully coincide at any one point. And you might want to set out two or three different race plans. Uh, an optimistic time, a realistic time and a pessimistic time. And as support, as the race progresses you'll find yourself probably switching between them. You'll know, start off pessimistic and they'll just get better and better. <laughs> <laughs> but you might also want to have a pen handy and update things might end up uh, running something totally different. Um, I've done one support for a runner where he beat even my optimistic time. As you uh, specify, so on, on your uh, race plan, at each of the checkpoints, uh, or each of the meeting points, it's worth being able to um, make sure you've agreed with your support, uh, your runner, what food you're going to take on board. So as, as you go through the race, you may have a, a plan of what you're going to take on at the first point and subsequent uh, stops. What day you're going to take. There may be locations where you're planning on uh, doing a clothing change, and that's particularly true if you're going to be going into uh, the Larry Blue in the middle of the night. Uh, you'll want to take on more clothing and get ready for that. Um, you might want to take, have a point at which you're going to take some drugs on board. Um, <laughs> Profit, paracetamol, uh, and also again, if you're going into darkness uh, and coming out of darkness uh, on the first uh, night, uh, torches and batteries, and make sure you've got all that stuff there. There will be or could well be sections where you'll want running support with you. Uh, so these are all the things to be talking about in front of the race and agreeing and mapping out. And uh, it's a good idea to write these things down and uh, have them there for reference as the race goes on. I've got an example, and I'll, uh, I'll need to give the credit to my two friends sat over on my left here. Because this is their uh, race plans. Uh, right. This is just a okay. This is just an example of a race plan, and uh, set this up. What was I saying about preparation? <laughs> It's, I think it's a trial one. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what's over on the right that you can't see. So, this is an example of some of the uh, original stopping points. You can't stop at all of these now. Uh, you need to check on the, the website where the official uh, meeting points are. Some of the ones in Glen Falk are no longer uh, accessible officially for sport. Um, Set a mile distance, some estimates of times, and there's a column over on the right hand side where we've got comments about what food uh, is wanted at each checkpoint and uh, clothing and all that sort, of, that sort of stuff. The other thing to uh, thought through is what you're going to be using on uh, the 
course, during the course of the race. Uh, so I've developed a checklist um, and that should include you know, the essentials like your head torch and all that sort of stuff, but your clothing changes um, and a checklist should cover both the supporter and the uh, actual runner. Because uh, as, as a supporter who's going to be out there for up to 35 hours, you're going to need stuff as well. You're going to need uh, dry clothing, wet, wet weather clothing, your own food uh, and supplies as well. bringing what. You don't want to turn up and, and uh, have a conversation on the start line and say, oh, I thought you were bringing the tent. <laughs> There's a few items of logistics that are worth talking through. You heard Sue mention about uh, other crews. Well, if you're, if you're going to have a split shift, shift and uh, you're meeting up, agree between the crews where the handover point is and roughly what time you expect to be there. Um, We've done changes at um, Octatire on, on several races. Uh, that's a good place. Uh, you need to sort out transport. So whose car are you going to be using? Uh, is each ship going to use a different vehicle? Are you going to pass things over? Or is there going to be a transfer of vehicle from, from one uh, support crew to the next? Uh, and if you're doing that, make sure everybody who is likely to need to be a driver is covered by the insurance obviously. Um, think about and, and identify where there's potential to pick up extra supplies on route. Uh, there's a number of uh, villages later on in the course of the race, especially once you get up to uh, Kinloch Leven and the like, where you can actually get extra supplies. Um, and by then, your runner may well have uh, developed a taste for something in particular that they've been thirsting for or yearning for all the way over uh, Rannoch Moor. Um, if that's what they're looking for, you better get it for them. have plenty of time to think about it. Um, think about communications. Last year, mobile phone reception in Glenfalloch and around Cree and Larrick was dreadful. Uh, I think it's actually a little bit better this year based on uh, a weekend uh, or two back. It was uh, somewhat better. But there will still be areas where reception will be poor. You might want to think about using shortwave radios um, if that's a, that's a particular concern. And lastly, accommodation. Um, when you get to to Fort William, you may want to uh, have a, a bed boot to crawl off to and uh, <coughs> so agree where you want accommodation and make sure you've got a boot well in advance. Um, alternatively, at the finish area. Um, People have been known to bed down with a, a sleeping bag, actually at the medical centre, or uh, people have put some uh, <coughs> unofficial tents out the back and use them. We've even got some friends here who've been invited to uh, uh, go into other people's tents that they've never met before in their life. <laughs> so the excitement of the West End will be uh, it's unbounded. Right, before the race, you need to talk with your runner about what kit they're bringing and when they're likely to wear it. They'll probably give you a kit bag much bigger than this. <laughs> <laughs> and this kit bag is particularly unhelpful if you're at the bottom of the Devil's Staircase and it's dark and they ask you to get you the woolly hat and my navy blue long sleeve top and maybe my waterproof. It's a mess. It's all dark. You can't find a thing. So check their bags. Encourage them 
to organise it. <laughs> and if they haven't organised it, <laughs> do it for them. So in their bags, know where to find things. Know where they're keeping their sunglasses, their woolly hats, their head torch. Know when they take their head torch off in the dark, where you're putting it, because you might need it again for the second night. So know where you've put it again. Um, consider putting things in nice clear plastic bags and label them. So there's the long sleeve tops. That's easier to find in the dark. Wet weather gear. You might want to separate them out for light rain gear, monsoon conditions. You know, make it clear. And think about yourself too. You're going to be getting cold and wet, so make sure you've got stuff for yourself. Check the essentials. Matches, tin opener, batteries, thermal cup, lid for the thermal cup. Again, who's supplying all these? Have they actually made it into the back of the car for the race? And Tesco's and Mulgai's open till midnight. So if you forget, you can pick things up there. Is there an afters bag? Have they remembered to put one in? Have they remembered a towel? Because they will want a shower at the end. Uh, you'll want them to have a shower at the end. <laughs> if you're sharing shifts, make sure that afters bag goes from the front shift car to the back shift car. Make sure it doesn't get left behind somewhere in off a tire. When you're packing the car yourself, make sure the things you need regular access to is convenient. After a while, when you're tired, the place gets a mess, but try and tidy it up at checkpoints. It will make things much more efficient for you. Again, get to the start in time. Don't put that stress on you. You've got to get there, you've got to get registered, you've got to get weighed in. So don't give yourself the extra hassle of running late. Set off in time. You can always go and have a cup of tea somewhere in Tesco and get out of the way if you want to. Go with your runner to the weigh-in. They've got to get weighed in and you as support will be given a card with their starting weight and it's checked throughout. No worry, if you put on too much weight, slightly less worry if they lose a bit of weight. It's worth noting down their starting weight somewhere for that time when you accidentally can't find the slip of paper. So put it in your phone or take a photo of it or write it on the dashboard, but keep a note of the starting weight. And then take a pre-race photo of everybody. You need to be calm, you need to be positive, they've trained, they're looking good. Tell them that and remind them of how good they're look looking and how well they're going to run. Then food and drink. Your runner should provide you with a fueling plan. They'll have practiced it in training, that's what they're doing just now. It's not just the miles they're putting in, it's they're testing their food and their eating and their drinking and what suits them. In general though, they need to start eating and drinking fairly early. You shouldn't be waiting for hours into the race. You should be eating and drinking fairly early. Not too much, just a wee bit fairly frequently. Because the bottom line is if they stop eating and you do see it for being sick or whatever, they'll struggle to finish if they're not eating. So encourage them with that. The food plan ideally should have variety. Some people do get away with mashed potatoes and nothing else, but it should have variety. Um, I've got a number of things here. Things like Slim Fast goes down well, or chocolate milk, or Mars bar drink. You can generally slip that down. Rice pudding, flapjacks, savoury things too. Don't just restrict yourself to sweet things. You know, a piece of marmite or a piece of jam can go down very well indeed. A packet of crisps, various nuts and things, good ways of getting proteins into you and a wee bit of variety. Ken mentioned being resourceful and using shops and things around because sometimes your runner just gets a craving and it does seem to be a wee bit of being pregnant. <laughs> um, you might be able to get it at the shops if they're still open. Support other supporters, ask them, they might have the very thing you're looking for if it's a bit more chocolate bourbon biscuit, they might happen to have it. Don't ask them yet. Definitely include savoury stuff. Um, somebody, when I was doing the Space Side Way last year, gave me a small pepperami sausage. I'd never have thought of taking that. It was great. Really enjoyed it. 
get your runner to soak sweeties, you know, if they really can't face eating and chewing, and they can put a sweetie in the side of their mouth and they're getting something from it and they don't have to think about that. Hot drinks, lots of the runners will want hot drinks, tea, coffee, soup, hot chocolate, try and get at the right temperature. Now, that's hard to do when you don't know exactly when they're coming in. So use your thermal cups, maybe bake the coffee double strength and have a flask of boiling water so that when they come in, you can top it up to the right temperature if it's cooled down. But equally, have a bottle of water there so if they've come in ahead of schedule and it's scalding hot, you can cool it down. So it's just trying to think of that type of thing. And remember, as supporters, you need to eat and drink too. So plan it in. There will be times when you could make yourself a bacon sandwich if you wanted, or get chips from the chip shop if you've got your timing right. And think, if you're at the stage in the race where you're maybe there's, you're in a pair, and one of you is chumming or you're running across Rannoch Moor or something, think ahead to the support runner. Is there any food for them? Do you have to maybe go and buy a sandwich somewhere so they've got something to eat at the end too? So look out for one another and your other support group. Okay, during the race, um, so quite a few things to think about in each support group right here, each place that you can meet them. Use the plan to predict uh, the arrival time, but make sure as a support crew get to the, uh, that you get to the meeting point early, and above all, know where it is. Um, Map out and have a good look at the, uh, the, the maps and make sure you know exactly where you're going. Um, there have been support crews who have gone sailing past the Bridge of Orkney and got halfway to Kinloch leaving uh, before telephone calls came in saying, where on earth are you? Um, I won't try to open it up after the success of the, the last attempt, but um, the attachments which we've got here, I'll make sure I go up on the uh, website and people can look at them at the leisure. But Scott Brantley has uh, pulled together an absolutely fantastic set of maps of all the uh, meeting points, all the, the checkpoints and directions how to get to them, which is uh, a great set. But for each of the support points, when you get there, so get there nice and early and prepare the food. Good basis is exactly what you've agreed on the support plan, which of course you've got. Um, but also have some alternatives. Um, runners change their minds, they fancy something different, you know, they get a, a particular uh, taste of something else. Um, but don't offer too many supplies. I think it's, it's not unheard of to kind of turn up a whole tray of things and say, okay, here, what do you want? And there's a couple of dozen different things there. Well, by the time they get to uh, Bridge of Oakey or Kinloch Leaven, the brain's probably switched off a bit. <coughs> Faced with that choice, they're just going to say, I don't know, you choose, give me something, anything. Um, Try to get in touch with what you're going to want. Richie used to make life very easy by saying, well, it's mashed potato and tomato sauce. Save it every channel. Right? <laughs> and that works. Um, top of bottles, uh, with the bladder and the thing you use again, make sure you get the air out. I, I burst, burst my bladder last, uh, last weekend, more than my doing that. Uh, but above all, make sure you're going to have some fluids. Uh, I allowed Richie to get off, head off over Rannick Moor without any fluids whatsoever on my first uh, support him, and I won't make that mistake again. He was a bit thirsty by the time he got to Glencoe, and he let me know. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, uh, if you need extra clothing, or if you keep an eye on the weather, if the weather is starting to deteriorate, your runner may need more clothing, you might need to be doing the thinking for them and have that stuff laid out and ready, available for them to uh, pull on and, and head off again. Uh, same with head torches. Runner's hygiene, uh, have tissues available, dialogue wool, hand wash. The runner will uh, take care of themselves, but having stuff like that at the, uh, uh, when you meet up with them can be welcome. The other thing that can be a real perk up for them later in the race is a warm wet face cloth and a toothbrush and that's especially true in the second night. That can give you a real psychological boost to get uh, you know, freshened up a little bit when you're that far into the race. But above all is support, 
your real role is to encourage your runner to keep going and uh, pick them up and, and uh, you know, really give it their all and uh, get them motivated. So tell them when they come in just how well they're doing, how great they look, lie through your back teeth. But make sure they go away with lots of positive vibes uh, on board. The, uh, the admin bits, make sure you record the arrival time, uh, the food and drink, and all that sort of stuff, because they'll, they'll want that on, uh, on subsequent races. They want to be able to go back and say, well, I really did that well on that race. What did I do? Let me, uh, let me use that success strategy again. Um, and once they head off, plan for your next support point. Uh, well, before they head off, make sure you have a conversation that says, okay, do you want something different? Are we sticking to the plan? Is it the food that we, we've got written down here, or do you want something different? Um, and update your, uh, your timing and make sure that you know you've got a good estimate of when uh, you and your runner need to be at the, uh, at the next checkpoint. For the, the runners who are uh, really looking for a good time, and that's clearly everybody, minimise the runners' time at the checkpoints. As a support, have the stuff there and walk through the checkpoint with them, feed them as they go, you know, go with them, carry on up the trail a ways and pick up the litter and the stuff that they discard, uh, but help them through, discourage them from sitting down. It's you know, the worst thing you can do, as you know. Um, once they're on the way though, back to the message we heard earlier, look after yourself, make sure you're getting fed and rested and then able to carry on. As a supporter, you'll find yourself uh, supporting other runners and occasionally other supporters too. Uh, others may struggle, they may run out of food, not have the thing that uh, is needed or wanted by the runner. Have, you know, help everybody that you can. Uh, you never know when you'll be looking for that uh, favour in return. Uh, and lastly, especially later on in the race, you just have to grin and bear the abuse you get from your runner for all the help and hard work and consideration of putting in. There's bound to be a young caustic comment that comes out. You, didn't, you don't get everything just quite right. Uh, accept it with a smile. You can get your retaliation in later by uh, making them go upstairs and downstairs. <laughs> After the race, you are still on duty, immediately after the race, and for quite, quite a while afterwards. So firstly, try and make sure you're at the finish and get some finishing photographs. Uh, it's quite important. They may not look their best, but they will want a memento of the occasion. Try and keep your runner moving at the end. Not a lot. Even if it's as much as I'm doing just now here, just moving a wee bit rather than collapsing or completely stiffening up, but just try and get them to move a wee bit. They've been running and moving 95 miles, 24 or 33 hours. Don't let them just stop dead. You are heading for faints and things if you do that. So a wee bit of moving about, walking around in the car park or in the lobby at the centre. Just a wee bit of movement. After effects, some folk are absolutely fine. But you can have people fainting throwing up or generally look after them, <coughs> keep an eye on them, help clean up if need be. Uh, they will feel fine after a while. Go with your runner to the shower or find somebody to go with them if it's not appropriate for the lady to be in the general showers. Again, once you're in that hot, steamy atmosphere, it's another good case for faints and cracking your heads and slippy tiles. So be careful with that one. Try and get some sleep before the prize giving. If you're fairly early, you've probably got it planned, you've got a bed for the night sorted. If you're getting in after 31, 32, 33 hours, you won't have that luxury really, but you can get your head down. It's amazing how after 95 miles the back of the car is very comfortable indeed. Uh, a roll mat just lying in the lobby in the sports centre is fine. You know, just a wee bit of sleep before you have to get up at noon to go to the prize giving. But keep an eye on your runner at that stage. So they do tend to go a bit wobbly at the end. Okay. Right, just to wrap up. 
few contingency plans to, uh, to think about. Number one is the weather. Uh, they say Scotland after all. So the old uh, adage of four seasons in one day. <coughs> you know, it, there's a good chance of, uh, of that happening. If the weather's awful, there's some practical things you can do. Um, if you've got a hatchback, point the car into the, the wind and orientate it so that when the, when the uh, tailgate's up, it actually gives you shelter. Gives you shelter, gives the runner shelter uh, from the wind and rain. Uh, or you can use the car doors to do the same. Uh, runner's clothes, like I said earlier, you may need to prompt them to put the stuff, uh, put the, the weather um, clothing changes on if the forecast is, uh, is heading downhill. Uh, equally, as a supporter, you're going to be standing around a lot and you'll get cold or you may be running in the latter stages of the race with your runner at what for you is quite a slow pace, uh, having, not having done the, uh, the previous 75 miles or whatever. Um, so you need to be kitted up yourself for going over the line and uh, make sure you've got layers and extra items for warm and waterproofs as well. Basic first aid, uh, we normally take a, our little first aid bag with us, nice little one, but uh, you know, the obvious stuff, compedes and other um, plastic plasters, a sterile needle from, from um, bursting them, antiseptic cream, emodium, elastic bandages, all the, all the obvious stuff. But make sure you've got them there and they're, they're ready to hand and, and the runner and the support can find them easily. If the runner needs any prescription, prescription medicines, make sure they're at hand. Um, contact lenses, if you uh, need to change all glasses if you want to take them off. Um, foot problems, prevention is better than uh, treatment later. So sort them out early and uh, Keep the runner in good state for, uh, for the rest of the race. I mentioned mobiles. We've never actually had to call on it, uh, but it's not a bad idea to have someone on the end of a landline uh, who can answer and pass on messages if for any reason you and your runner can't communicate uh, by mobiles. They can often get to a phone uh, in some of the villages and you can do the same and relay messages that way. So we've never actually had to do that. But uh, it's not a bad idea to have that set up if you need, in case you need it. Lastly, and I speak, say this most honestly as uh, somebody who supported a few, it's great fun. It's why we do it. And uh, I think the pictures kind of speak for themselves. So have a good race and uh, best of luck.